um, myself, Simon. I'm a, a project manager for Jacobs. Um, I've been with the company for 20 years now, and I've got a background in survey management before transferring my skill set over to project management for the TIU project, which we will be talking a lot around today. Uh, those of you who didn't hear, I've also joined by my colleague Libby, who's our current intern placement, and Aidan Taylor, who's also joined us, who's going to share his experience of being our outgoing intern, who's been with us for the past year. Okay. Um, as I said before, any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat or, or, or do ask, save them to the end, that's fine. Or if you do think of any afterwards, um, there'd be ways and means of getting in touch with us to ask any further questions. Um, so running order today, we're going to go through a few slides. Um, who are Jacobs? Um, what is TIU? Uh, what is Jacobs' role on TIU? What could your role be on TIU? Um, Aidan and his experience is going to go through a few slides. Um, we'll summarise the opportunities, um, why why choose Jacobs, and then finally the, the part you're probably interested in the most is uh, the offer um, to you as students for, for 2021. Okay, we'll just flick on to the next slide please Libby. So who are Jacobs? Um, I, it's long enough now to hear all the funnies. Do we, do we do cream crackers? Do we do biscuits? Are we only busy at Christmas, et cetera? Um, so who are Jacobs? We're an engineering consultants firm that we look for design solutions. We're the number one most admired company, an engineering construction company uh, in the world. We're the number one out of the top 500 design firms. And we're the number one top consultant for environment, health and safety and digital vision and strategy. I think one of the big pushes recently um, is definitely in the digital world. Um, we're going to share three three videos through this session um, and hopefully it'll set the scene um, for our presentation to come. So this is our first video of Poe Jacobs. So I've just got to change the settings for the volume. When we start out in this world, the possibilities are as endless as the night sky. Nothing is impossible. Over time, you might question, you might doubt. But at Jacobs, we always see the world as it can be. We're the curious, the brave, the optimistic, and the grounded. We keep planting the seeds of potential. We're bold enough to explore. We make connections that make the difference. We change the trajectory of how we all live today and into tomorrow. We seek perspectives, combining the knowledge of those before us with what we know now. And together, we're able to transform the future. We're a global team empowered to question, discover, and try. To us, everything is achievable. We collaborate, designing solutions that make life smarter, more seamless, and more sustainable for everyone. We anticipate calculate and evaluate and then act with agility and precision. We look for insights and ideas, pushing the limits of what's possible to create the standard for what's to come. Whether it's applying our discoveries to drive the world ahead, ensuring the resiliency of our planet and its people, or acting with agility to design and protect the smart places of tomorrow. We're united in our drive to dream. And as the world's thinkers, visionaries, and doers, we are always pushing beyond. OK, 
Okay, thanks, Libby. So that kind of sets the scene for who are Jacobs uh, and what we do. As you can probably tell from that video, um, we're a, a monthly national company with our headquarters being in, in America. So Jacobs ourselves, we've got over 50,000 employees worldwide and we have an annual revenue of over $13 billion. What we do, so we've got elements of environmental, transportation, water, buildings and infrastructure, security, defence, aerospace and nuclear life cycle. So all these we class as our business units and they're all cross sector and we work in each one and we can transfer our skills to any one of those. Some of the larger projects, um, a lot of these are London based, but we have offices all over the UK. Um, some of the big ones you might have heard of a deep tube program. We've got, we had part in the London 2012 Paralympics, Crossrail HS2, Thames Tideway, and the refurbishment of Palace of Westminster. That's just a few of our flagship uh, projects we're currently working on. So what is the Transpanine route upgrade? This is the project that hopefully one, two, three or four of you will be working on going forward. This is the project that myself has been involved with in the last five years. Aidan, our outgoing intern, worked on and Libby is currently working on. So again, um, a bit more of a visual aid to show the um, our digital element of our work. Um, this video has been pulled off our Jacobs Connect page, which is our intranet page. Um, so Lib is just going to share this video now. So that was a, a short, short demonstration video on our, our, our project, the TIU. This is one of the flagship uh, projects for transportation in the north. Um, you've probably heard Boris Johnson talking about it quite a bit. And Jacobs are in a privileged position to be working with our client in partnership who are Network Rail. So TIU in summary, TIU achieved aim is to achieve 67 minute journey time between Manchester and York to offer more trains and seats per hour, 92.5% of trains on time, a greener and safe railway and better Wi-Fi for the commuter. And all this is put in passengers first, which is a, um, a tag of the government currently. TIU project itself consists of 29 level crossings, 25 stations, 76 miles of track and six miles of tunnel. It's actually split into 
two regions. So we've got York to Leeds and then Leeds to Manchester. And that's known as the East and the West. And this is built up by alliances of multiple companies coming together to produce one output. Um, so what's Jacob's role on the TIU programme? Um, so we're part of the PMO, so it's got three um, three functions that are the commercial, engineering and programme controls. So we work to define the strategies and plans and requirements for, for the delivery teams. So I'm in the contract management team, so we use like work plans and dashboards to find out we meet with every work stream every week to discuss their plan tasks and then what they've actually managed to complete that week and then we get a, a picture of kind of what's going well and maybe what needs more focus on so we work closer with the uh, network rail who is the client to understand their requirements and um, how we can achieve them um, and we have a good relationship with them so this is the fifth year that we'll be working with them and then we also work with the alliances so like Simon said the east and west um, and for their requirements um, so there's lots of different um, teams that you could work in so asset management system engineering project management data analysis and modeling requirements digital rail and stakeholder engagement so something that I think is quite unique and about Jacobs is that rather than um, recruiting people for specific roles, it's more kind of recruiting individuals on their skills um, and then fitting you into a team where you'd best sue and where you could excel. So I think especially if maybe you're not kind of sure what what kind of job you want to do specifically, you can have the opportunity to be in a role where you can try different teams. So like I've started at the end of July, but I've already had the experience of um, trying some, well, spending some time in something called document control. So where the documents go to be signed and um, getting get involved in like the commercial side as well. So I think it's good because you get the chance to, to over the course of the year to, ex to experiment in different roles. OK, so, so I'm Aidan. I'm currently in my third year here at York St John. Um, I finished my placement year with Jacobs at the end of August. Um, like Libby, I also work within the contract management team. Um, some of the things I did included supporting, managing the program and production, uh, as well as commercial aspects of the contract. Um, I had overall support to the team, as well as assisting the project manager, Simon. Um, I was also trusted with financial information and creating sort of lots of commercial reports as well as um, sort of creating and enhancing the TDA's production process whilst running my own weekly production meetings, like the same things that Libby runs now. So over the last year, sort of one thing that's really stood out to me and sort of everyone around me, including sort of my family and friends, is like my massive boost in confidence. Um, I think a year ago I wouldn't be doing this talk voluntarily I would have just been like avoiding it <laughs> any opportunity so um, I've also learned how Jacobs operate as well as give, it gives you an insight of sort of how such large-scale businesses operate in general um, I've really learned well how to professionally work and integrate with a client and all the knowledgeable people that I've met working on the project sort of allowed me to learn a lot more about rail and infrastructure in general um, I've really furthered my knowledge in working with large data sets like it was something that I was interested in before and being able to sort of carry on working on that and then present that data and stuff that I've learned is was really good as well and the fact I've mentioned before that I got to manage my own weekly meetings um, one thing is that I always felt empowered at Jacobs to like put forward my ideas I felt like in my first few weeks that there's no way I could put an idea forward and people would listen to it because I'm an intern, that kind of stigma. But you, I f always felt like I could suggest my ideas and people would listen to them and take them into account. And I was, and some of those ideas I got to actually work on and carry them out like further into my role. And then one of the really standout things for me was 
just being able to create tools, processes, and make changes on the project that would really make a difference in the future. Um, this experience really helped me manage sort of a really good work work life balance, and sort of is something I've taken into uni this year, like actually sort of trying to keep almost a nine to five sort of schedule to try and get work done, which is helpful. But um, it's good to note that like all of these things uh, really helped me out during third year and will help me going forward and just get develop these skills further. So and I'm happy to answer any other questions you have at the end. Thank you. Thanks, Aidan. I think that's a, a really good insight into into your year at Jacobs. I think it's worth mentioning that um, any intern that, that comes on, on board is fully immersed into the project world and Jacobs world. Um, and the, the value that, that they bring um, is, is, is brilliant. Um, and it's also worth mentioning that success of at the internship um, and the partnership we've got with York St. John's um, is, is brilliant. We've made a full-time offer to um, uh, a graduate who completed the internship two years ago. So he's he's now with us full-time at Jacobs and we are actively um, pursuing a part-time role for Aidan and another intern, Harriet, who have just completed because we're that keen on keeping this good talent and also it, it, it's good for Aidan that he could have uh, or will have a job at the end of his uh, of being a graduate and graduating and uh, hopefully be straight onto the uh, graduate scheme at, at Jacobs, um, which is a formal process. So it's a, a testament to the effort that Aidan's put in over the last year. So thanks again, Aidan, for that. So, so what does it mean for you? What are your opportunities? So your time at Jacobs will expose you to the real world of working. You will learn how to use industry standard software, improve problem solving, and get a chance to apply your skills to the real world problems and work in an agile environment, which is key at the minute, because as you can see, we're not used to working like this. So since March, we've brought in new processes and procedures just to try and get through this. So we've got to be quite agile and resilient. One of the good things um, about Jacobs um, is we have a really, really good social calendar and events. Um, it's difficult at the minute, but what we want to do is demonstrate what we, what we do over a year. We, we, we put teams in for marathons, we do cycling challenges, we have nights out with bowling, cookery schools, go-karting, um, you name it, any activity we, we try and do. We've done escape rooms um, and it is a great ethos and team building. Um, and it's just like it's just like a family. It's, it's, it's really is a, um, a team effort here at Jacobs. So it's pretty good. So I've just got another video, last one now, um, just to show you um, furthermore about early career development um, within Jacobs. I think what sets Jacobs different from the other competitors that we have is, is the culture and the atmosphere. Uh, we really care about each other. It's even though, like, I'm in Calgary, there's 2,000 people around, give or take, but it feels like you're, you're going to work with your family. People have your back. People want to teach you chances to grow. And Jacobs is all over the world. Jacobs offers an enormous opportunity to young graduates and people early in their careers because they're willing to support people as they come into a new position. They give them training, they give them opportunities to work with more experienced professionals. And all in all, it's a great company to work for. I think Jacobs promote, promote their staff. I think they are good at developing their staff. I think they're good at instilling confidence within uh, the workplace. I think they expose you to a lot of new things that you probably wouldn't get elsewhere. Jacob Future Network is our early career development program. 
Uh, it's based, it's targeted at people in the first five years of their career. We're trying to give them a great introduction to Jacobs, uh, make sure they understand about our company and our values, that they get to know the people that they're working with, both locally and around the world, and uh, that they have opportunities to keep developing as a professional. One of the models, actually the model of the Jacobs Future Network is we want you to dream big. And that is really the, the mantra that we follow when we, when we engage our employees, is they, we want them to dream big, we want them to get engaged, and we want them be able to pursue their dreams at Jacobs. They uh, give me um, um, many, many uh, opportunity uh, for a, a grow in my in my career, in my uh, personality. Before the network, I mean, I was uh, you can say in a cocoon within my project team, and I had those limited people I used to talk to and maximum my supervisor. But now with Jacob's network and Jacob's future, what it's doing is that we are getting to meet senior leaders in, in the management and we are able to listen to them. So there is a culture of wanting to grow. It's really exciting. There's an honesty, a transparency straight away. People in the business are willing to share their successes, their failures. It's really important to have that honesty so that you can learn from people. I feel that like um, I have such as many opportunities to go ahead and maybe in the future try to work on different projects on a different country. For me it's the personal connections that you make because I've found them to be the most powerful tools in my career. Whether that is a client relationship, whether it's being able to use utilize your network to find your next job opportunity, that has been crucial. It's one of those things that you, you come to Jacobs and your career is in your own hands. You have if you want to be a home person, then Jacobs will help do everything you want, except for if you're, if you're prepared to go and put yourself out there and do something different, the opportunities are everywhere and anywhere. If, if you fancy going to work for NASA, as I've met several NASA scientists recently, if you want to go build power stations, if you want to build islands in the Middle East, you can do anything and everything. It's, it gets to that point in life that they will support you to help you grow your career how you want to grow it where you want to grow it and, all, and where you see yourself in five, ten years. You you get the support from the people you work with, your managers, the senior managers, and they'll, they're there for you to help you grow as you see fit. Okay, so hopefully that gives um, a taste of how seriously and how committed we are to early development in, in our graduate scheme. Okay, so the, the next slide, I think, talks around the offer. So the offer itself is a 12 month placement with Jacobs um, and that is with Network Rail as well because we're sat in the client's office when we get back into the office. The home office is situated in York, 30 seconds from the station. It's a flexible summer start date so if you've got commitments, holidays already booked for for summer next year, we can be flexible in accommodating the actual start date and the opportunity to experience multiple industries in one placement and that's through visits. And ultimately, I think the one that resonates with me is a role that fits you. Uh, Libby will just talk now about the um, process of applying for this. Yeah, so um, I think Suzanne's got the application form, but we can always send it again if need to be. Um, so if you send the completed application form and your CV to um, York Intern Recruitment at Jacobs.com um, by the 5th of February. So the applications are open now. Um, and then there'll be an interview day in February, March time, but we'll confirm the day. And then if you're successful, that you'll get the confirmation of your placement at the end of March to then start in the summer. Um, so I can open it up to any questions. Yep, open up to any questions. What I will say is I'll I'll stop on for five minutes or so and then I realise there might be um, an opportunity where you'd like to ask student to student questions where um, you might not want me around and um, you can ask Libby or Aidan um, questions um, in, in that format as well. So if you've, if you've got one of those, I'll, I'll hang on for a bit and then I'll drop off and leave you to it. Simon, Libby um, and Aidan, thank you very much. Um, that was really, really informative. I have just put um, the link in the chat to where the job is on um, Launchpad Online. So we have 
I've got it on there and it has gone live, so it is sat on there um, if anybody wants to apply for it. Um, please do be aware that it is a, a C, um, your CV and, and an application form, and the application form is at the bottom of the advert. Don't click on the apply button um, and upload your CV there without the application form. Um, just send the application form straight to, to Jacobs um, with your CV. Um, we've got one question is, do you take postgraduates or master's students? So our master's students have to do a placement as part of their course. Um, would you be open to master's students applying for your opportunities? Yep, absolutely. There you go, Yasmin. Has anybody got any other questions? Any I'm questions sure about Jacobs? Any questions on TIU? Any questions on your placement? Concerns, issues, queries. Dan's got his uh, hand up there. Yeah. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, um, I was just going to ask about: Does it matter how early you apply? Does that make does that make a difference to someone who applies later, or does it's just Absolutely. how good your CV is, or whatever? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. That's all. Are you filling it out now, Dan? <laughs> As we speak. <laughs> any more questions while I'm on? I'll uh, I'll drop off just in case there is anyone who wants to speak without me there. Simon, it's Sarah. So just check. So um, if when they start their placement, they're still remote working in place would you still be able to support interns if that was still the situation absolutely so um um example in 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 where we are now libby has um joined us whilst the ro remote working was underway so um it's, it's been a challenge but it's been a brilliant one um we've got um libby set up on all it systems we've done inductions briefings onboarding um a daily call and we have and um, like in a social way as well, not just work. Um, you know, it's taxing. Um, and I'll probably ask Libby actually to to see how it went. Any any feedback now? Alive in front of everyone's fine. But uh, yeah, you're an example of coming on board during lockdown, really. Yeah, I think like you'd expect it to be quite hard, but it actually went quite smooth. And I don't know. I guess I've started this way, so I'm kind of I didn't know any different, but. It's been, yeah, it's been good, like, get to know everyone and still, and like Simon said, the morning calls are good because you get, like, a briefing um, and just a chance to, yeah, chat to people. And I think Teams obviously helps a lot because you can still, even though you're not with people, you can still see them face to face and still have that interaction. Yeah, so so one of your, one of your queries might be, where will I be working? Um, in an office, I realised that Libby was looking off at the time of the interviews and the kind of recruitment day that we, we do a tour around the office and you kind of meet the teams that you you will be working with because I feel it's important that you understand the environment you'll be working in, the people you're working with and get a sense of um, how that feels, whether it's a tense atmosphere in the office or quite a relaxed atmosphere in the office. So Libby was looking enough to do that. Now, although we not, might not be in the office at the time, I might be able to arrange something where we do meet um, of, of the shortlisted people for the interview, where we do show those people around the office, even if the office is closed. Because I still feel that's quite important that during the period that you join, that we might go back into the office, that you're, you're comfortable in the environment and you realise what the office is like, whether it's modern, old or, or, or that kind of thing. So I feel that's important. That's what I'd be asking. That's great, Simon and Libby. Thanks for that. Thank you. No problem. OK, I'll uh, I'll bid farewell. Oh, sorry, Scott. Scott. I've just got a, um, a question because you said um, yours is um, York based, isn't it, Simon? Yes. Um, at the moment, I was just wondering if because you said you had op opportunities other places like London, mm -hmm. um, how would I go about applying to the London? So the the actual this this offer this internship is is purely for York. This is to work within 
on the TIU project, whether afterwards as part of the graduate um, scheme, when you, if you know if you if you join Jacobs, the opportunity there is endless to join. Well, this particular internship is purely um, related to, to York and and this particular project. Having said that, again, um, we've got current interns that were based in York, obviously with York St John's. Um, but they've actually gone back to families and they might be in London, Glasgow, Edinburgh. So that whilst we're re remote working, there's nothing to stop you working from a different area of the country. But when we okay. get when we get back into the office, it will be a York, York placement. OK, so this opportunity isn't in London. It's only purely York based. Sorry, is that? Yes, for, yeah. For, for, for the, yeah, to be clear for this internship, it's purely York based. OK, thank you. Anybody else? No? OK, well, I'll bid you farewell. Hopefully I'll um, hear from some of you fairly soon. Um, I'll drop off. Libby will stay on and Aidan will stay on for another minute or two.